Welcome to another episode of VM End to End, a show where we have a former, maybe even reformed VM skeptic and a VM enthusiast, my friend Brian, together to hash out all things VMs. Brian, thank you for being here. Uh, what is this episode about? You just told me it's special, I had to be here, and that was it. Yep, I think you're gonna like this. Uh, it's where I admit that VMs might not always be the answer. Uh, can you say that one more time? VMs might not always be the answer. It depends. And so with that in mind, I wanted to bring in an expert colleague of ours who has been a sysadmin, who has, you know, kind of run all kinds of different machines and, um, you know, who's now focused on serverless. Welcome, Katie. Hello. Thank you for inviting me, Brian. Yes. And Katie, I'm extra excited. I don't know if you, yeah, you just heard what Brian said about... <laughs> Maybe VM's not always being the answer. Uh, weren't, didn't you work on, get to play around with the Migrate for Cloud Run tooling? I did. Brian, have you heard about this one? It's very cool. You know, honestly, I think I heard about it. And let me make sure I'm right. Is this the, is this the thing that claims to be able to kind of make containerized setups out of what's running on a VM? Yes, and it works. I tried it. Wait, okay, like now, okay, I have to admit, I was like so skeptical of this, you know, it's like so much often considered kind of an anti-pattern and like you can't just kind of lift this whole VM into a container, containers aren't VMs, all this sort of stuff that I I didn't actually look at it as carefully as I probably should because I, it didn't pass my, is this real test? So how was I wrong about that? I had the same sort of thoughts. It's like, but if I've got a complex VM that's got all these different services, some of them are uh, socket driven, some of them are port driven, how am I going to take that from a VM and put it into a container? But I found that it was actually really cleverly done. Um, what I did was I built a very special bespoke crystalline VM and I installed Postgres from system packages. I set that all up. I uh, set up a Django website on there. I had a whole bunch of user uploads on there. So it was a very bespoke VM. And then I ran it through uh, Migrate for Cloud Run. And that was able to containerize the VM, identify what services were running. And then I had the choice to disable all the services and then re create them. Well, not recreate, redefine the services. There's a particular YAML that you can define, uh, services-config.yaml, where uh, like you would define a whole bunch of uh, systemd services, you can define new services. So I disable all the services that's running on this containerized VM, and then I declare a new one, which is just my web service uh, on a port, and then when that's running in Cloud Run, all I do is say, see that port, go listen to that. Uh, one thing I did find though, that this worked really well when combining it with the database migration service. So I could take my uh, locally running Postgres database and then migrate that into Cloud SQL. So I could migrate my VM twice, but it meant that I was able to go from one very special VM that if it went away, I'd be very sad into manage Cloud SQL, and then into a container in Cloud Run that can scale to zero, survive restarts, all that kind of fun. It was actually really neat. I'm interested in sharing more about that to some of our customers. There's two things I want to ask about here. One, first, you define the mapping between uh, ports and sockets and whatnot. But two, you said that you had a VM or you wrote a custom bespoke, bespoke VM, and then you transitioned it into a more managed service. Why? Why would you go up the stack that way? Well, Kata, what do you want to have to worry about? Me personally, nothing. I, I want to write code and I want to be done with it. That's what I want to worry about. <laughs> you know? For brand new Greenfield projects or proof of concept projects, you can do that straight away with Cloud Run, where it's such an abstraction on top of the VM, on top of the Kubernetes, on top of everything. You just need to containerize your code and go run it. But there are going to be brownfields projects where you're going to have something that exists and you're going to, if you want to pull it up into a serverless system, you're going to have to do that migration step. But with managed services, you don't have to worry about a number of things. Like 
who were you talking with the other day? Um, was it Gabe about databases? Yes, it was. He talked to us about databases, hosted, how to decide when to host on a VM, and some database migration stuff. Yeah, I mean, in my bespoke virtual machine, I would have to worry about maintenance and package system, uh, system package updates and backups of my database. Once I'm in Cloud SQL, that's all there by default. What do you want to have to worry about? Okay, well, let's say, let's, let's get an example. Let's ground it in uh, reality. Say one of our two co-hosts on the show was writing a small backend application, uh, no front end, it just uses APIs, goes from a command line type deal. Um, where would I want to run that? Or sorry, where would our co-host, whoever it is, want to run that? Well, Carter and or Brian, <laughs> it depends. It sounds like you may not even have to worry about Cloud Run because with Cloud Run, you would have to uh, have a container that listens on a port and then serves stuff. But it sounds like if you've just got a function, you might just want to go straight to Cloud Functions where you just supply a function, a method, a function description with parameters, and then it gives you, it returns data and just copy paste that up into cloud functions and everything else is handled for you. Mm -hmm. Can can I ask a question, Brian, I see that you've got something on your mind. So let me sneak this one in. Um, I, I'm used, I'm very used to with say like Kubernetes, just putting a web app in a container and running that. Uh, what is the difference between cloud run, which I'm not really familiar with and something like a Kubernetes there? Cloud Run is just managed Kubernetes. Oh, uh, so then uh, like like GKE basically. Yeah, uh, Cloud Run runs on top of Knative, which itself runs on top of GKE, which itself runs on top of VMs, which itself runs in Google data centers, which itself runs on servers. You don't have to worry about so many things when you move up this abstraction stack you're still using the underlying technology, but you don't have to worry about it. I love what you just said there, abstraction stack. Like I, I like to think about it, you know, you talked about Cloud Run and we've got App Engine and, oh, sorry, we talked about functions and we've got App Engine and Cloud Run and Kubernetes and VMs. And like, like you said, if you've got a greenfield thing, like you probably want to start at the top of this abstraction stack and kind of work your way down. And if you have something existing, that's already running in a VM or on a computer somewhere, it's probably going to be easiest to start, you know, towards the bottom. Um, nice. I mean, yeah, it's very nice. I remember back in the day, if I wanted to try to get logs or debug a machine, I would have to physically go to the data center and wheel out a little trolley and plug in a keyboard and mouse. Nowadays, depending on where in the stack I am, I either SSH directly into the machine or I go into cloud logging and everything's already there. I don't have to physically drive to where my machine is anymore. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. My life is very much better now. I do not have to physically go and plug in keyboard and mouse into servers. Right. I, yeah, I can, I can relate to this, uh, being in the military, I used to work on or some very old computer technology. Uh, uh, I'm glad I don't have to deal with that anymore. Uh, but there's something I wanted to dig into a little bit deeper here. Your thought process behind uh, thinking about, well, what do you want to have to worry about? And what do you have to manage? Is that based on what resources the application is touching? For example, if the application is touching a web port or a web socket, then you might have to use like a cloud run as opposed to a serverless. It depends. <laughs> uh. <laughs> If you have a system that relies on specific GPUs, you might have to choose a service where you can define those. Uh, the Cloud Run container contract is just tell me what port on this container I should listen on and I will serve that for you. You can have anything you want inside that container. I have colleagues that have put Fortran into that container and COBOL into that container. As long as it listens on a port, it's fine. But 
if you need to start worrying about not just one container, but multiple containers, you might want to drop down into GKE and handle your orchestration at that level. If you want to have to worry about specific types of CPU architecture, you might need to drop down into VMs. But if all you want to do is when someone goes to my HTTP URL, they get back a response then some of these higher level abstractions are going to be the solution for you. But you don't just have to choose one. You can mix and match. Oh, yeah. Brian. Okay. So I, I actually, I'm inspired by Katie's, you know, kind of picture painting here and the, it depends. Um, so what if we, we kind of keep with the theme of VMs, right? Cause that's this like conversation, but you know, compare and contrast, like, if you were going to use functions versus a VM, like when would you use functions instead? When would you choose a VM? When would you combine them? Um, mm -hmm. And kind of go through the whole stack, abstraction stack, you know, one at a time and, and dig into each. I am so here for this because as soon as you said that, my first question was, oh, wait, I can use serverless and VMs together in the same application? What? Like... Is that a thing? So yes, I want to go and I want to find out what tools I can use in place or begrudgingly with VMs if that's what I need to do. Awesome. Katie, would you be up for coming back and dig deeper on some of these? Season three. Season three. I'd love to. <laughs> Take that as a yes. Season three. Well, yo, if you're watching at home, I, I just want to say... Uh, you know, thanks for sticking with us for so long. Next season, it sounds like we're going to go on a little bit of an adventure and explore different use cases uh, for some of these abstractions on top of VMs and when you might want to use them. Uh, so thank you so much. Katie, thank you for being here. Brian, as always, thank you. Yo, so if you are at home watching this, I'm sure there's a couple things that uh, we talked about today that maybe spurred your thoughts. Some questions that you have about VMs and using them with some of these different tools and services. So drop those in the comments. We'll check those out and stick around because next season it's going to get weird. That's VM end to end. Thank you. <laughs>